tired. We live now. We live. We on the road now. Hold on. Let me make sure that we good. Touch the microphone. Nope. It's not working. Let me see. Yeah. I don't know why it's not working though. Test it now. Hello. That one's mine. I don't like this. Why is it not working? Hello. That is bothering. No, it's not. I'm not going to plugged in all the way. Is it turned up? That don't have nothing to do with it. Well, it is plugged in. Yeah. Unplug it, unplug it back in. Plug it back in now. Hello, hello. Talking, no, talk, just talking to a regular. Hello, can you hear me? Is yeah, it working? There you go. Alrighty. <laughs> it's Monday. Monday, Monday. Let me make sure that mine's is right, and then we're going to get it popping. So hold on. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Are we good? I like that. I like what we got going on here. All right. I think that we good. I think so. Man, Mondays. Right. Absolutely. Hold on. Let me get a better, more zoomed in view. on a chair I didn't even notice that I need supposed to be catching these things my apologies don't be acting like somebody didn't took your lunch that's so corny <laughs> yeah microphone I issues up that. in this I month said today. my apologies <laughs> good morning we got a stare down going on this morning <laughs> hi how are you why are you apologizing you said I'm supposed to catch these things, and I said my apologies. What's wrong with that? Because you, you know it didn't warrant an apology. Like it was just talk and jump. Okay, my apologies for <laughs> my apology. <laughs> you, you <try laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, uh, now she's trying to make me look bad here. I don't even want no Rolex this morning. Wow, Maybe I don't want to go off camera. And I don't. Back. I don't. I don't want a Rolex this morning. Why? Cause I'm about to get down and dirty in the trenches and with this University of Michigan story. Oh, let's do it. It's gonna get ugly this morning. It's gonna get ugly. I don't even have a white beater on this morning. I got a straight up <laughs> V-neck T-shirt on up under this joint. Hey man, there's been a lot going on on this Monday. This money making Monday. You got a different microphone arm because I had the microphone arm broke. Right in the middle of right when we was going live stream, and I come over there to fix it, and then it mug. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, but this is fine. They can still hear us. What is going on? We still about to cook, right? Anton gotta have backup microphone arms. I don't know what's going on. It's Anton from AntonDaniels.com. Monday morning. Welcome to the Millionaire Morning Show. Um, I'm happy to be with you guys another day. Did you guys enjoy the marriage series yesterday? Hmm. Do you enjoy getting a 
relatively full view into the life of Rita and I. I'm curious. Do you? Did you? Hmm. Are you sharing this with your friends? Are we adding value to your life in order to try to show you guys how to be successfully married? I'm curious. Man, my beard is not right. I got the grays coming through. I'm going to have to get all of this taken care of. This. I'm feeling some type of way today. You still look amazing. Aw, you're so nice. Well, let me get the housekeeping out of the way. So first and foremost, I have to appreciate and celebrate the fact that uh, Tej Henley continues to hold us down. Um, and thank you for Nicholas Virgil for continuing to pour into us with the $100 super, super chat yesterday. Um, I am a man of my word. And, uh, you know, when you give that type of super chat, I got to I got to shout out the fact that you guys are pouring into me by allowing you guys to sponsor the stream. So I appreciate you guys. You are absolutely awesome. Teach Hanley, Unca Uncomplicated Skincare for Men. Um, that link is in the description for you to get your free gift. So make sure you tap in there. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Bag Chasers, Patreon members. We rock with them. We love them. We actually absolutely hold them down because they hold us down. Uh, dropped a Patreon exclusive video yesterday. We are doing a Patreon meetup in the Los Angeles area this weekend. This Saturday, I haven't even booked my hotel yet, but we didn't have to fly it for a long time. Look at Rita shaking her head. Look at her. Shaking her head. Mm-hmm. Look at her. Rita be trying to embarrass me on the live stream. On you the, the one that put the camera on me. Nobody would have known that I was doing that if you wouldn't have said it. Because they need Just to see what we they need me. to see what we authentically are all, all the way. That's now, true. the question is, why are you shaking your head? Because um, mm. I don't like doing things at the last minute. We've had this flight for a long time now. Rita, you know I how I feel like rock. when you book the flight. You know how I get down. Yes, I do. But you asked me why I was shaking my head. And I was because when we book the flight, I like to book the hotel right then because we know that we need a hotel. But we got to do a little bit Anton of research. Anton likes to book the hotel Either when we get to the airport or when we get off the plane in the city and we about to drive to the hotel, but we be about to drive to, we don't know where we about to drive to because a lot of times our hotel don't even be booked. You've been dealing with this for, for over 17 I years. Have. Why are you acting extra now though? I'm not. That's why I, I didn't say anything. I just shook my head and <laughs> pray, pray we have somewhere to live when we, we get to might California. Have to modify this, uh this morning show why just have you off camera the whole time why why would you do that because i don't know you out here trying to make me look bad vernon scott says it's been one of those i agree family i agree it has been one of those mondays show was fun last night thanks for adding me jay i appreciate you for coming up our late night live streams was lit our late night live streams be lit in the mug i feel like i put on the best shows on the t entire mother effing internet real talk I our late night that. live streams is dope um yeah man listen martin luther king day let me let me finish getting the rest of the housekeeping out of the way so make sure you guys subscribe to the channel i uh, hit a like for the youtube algorithm make sure you subscribe to both of my channels and the lapeef network okay we cooking up a mirror live stream last night at sage talk on saturday we got k and kayla tonight we are absolutely a network in every way shape and form that you can imagine so shout out to everybody that hold us down again the patreon link to the patreon is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat if you want to book me or read it for a personal call you need to get your life together in any way shape or form go to my website antondaniels.com and send me an email we're gonna get that popping um and life is absolutely awesome anything else before we uh get the show started rita marriage series yesterday what was your thoughts oh i really enjoyed it really really enjoyed it but I always do. Why did you enjoy the marriage series yesterday? Because I feel like that every day we do it, or every week that we do it, we're helping somebody. Honey, you got to look at the people. Oh, you be sorry. looking at the at the laptop. We still trying. We getting Rita together. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have to work on that because I like I look down even in person when I talk. Don't I look down. Look up. Look up at daddy. Look up at your at your father. Yes, yes. Look at her facial expressions tell it all. <laughs> what I love you. 
I don't mind looking at you. Oh, you said more than love last night, but we're going to get into that later. <laughs> it was more than love. Let me go ahead and turn these phones over. It was got some strange things for oh, some change goodness. up in there last night. But you it's okay. are crazy. Relationships are transactional. We're not well, going to worry about it. I'm getting my birthday gift, so. That, is, that didn't that's guarantee. That's all that matters. That was, a, that's a, that was that's an option. That's what you said. That was an option. We shouldn't be talking about this on MLK We'll talk Day. later. Listen. Talk later. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. It is MLK Day. Happy MLK Day. You know, I thought about not even doing a monologue today, for, to be honest with you. And one of the reasons that I changed my mind is that um, I think that people cite Martin Luther King all wrong. I think that they look at him all wrong. Wow. I don't believe that people truly study the life of Martin Luther King. It kind of reminds me of the Bible, right? People pick and choose different quotes, but they don't look at the context of his entire life in order to better understand how he lived his life, why he did things the way that, he's di- that he did it, and why it's necessary for us to truly learn from it. You know, our heroes, man, our heroes of yesteryear, is so much different than the heroes of today. I feel like me, along with a few other people, are the leaders of today. I believe that when it's all said and done, I will be mentioned in the name, like amongst the name of some of the greats. Honestly, I truly believe that in my heart. I think that, you know, I got so much time to do the work, to catch up and put points on the board. But when it's, in, you know, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to be breaking some scoring records. I believe it. And it's largely because people like Martin Luther King came before us and they set the path and the blueprint, but very few people actually abide by it. Very few people are actually trying to learn from our elders. We use them in order to make talking points or this and that. And then the only thing you know of is the I have a dream speech. You didn't actually go and do the work yourself. And it's funny because a lot of times, People always say, well, they don't teach black history. You don't even know nothing about the people that you know about. That you suppo- The people that they taught you about. The people You didn't go and do no research on your own. And they stood for so much more. You know what Martin Luther King Day is for a lot of y'all? It's a day, an opportunity to get a day off of work. <laughs> for a lot of people, it's a day for them to be able to sleep in. It's not a day of acknowledgement. It's not a day of celebration. Holidays for a lot of people, and that's not just Martin Luther King Day, but it, because it's MLK Day, and some people are off of work, myself included, you know, it's a day for people to get the day off of work. And I don't believe that people truly understood what these people been through. You know, I've seen people trying to use his life and his legacy in order to try to tarnish and make a negative point. I've see pe- seen people... Um, all across America, if you drive down Martin Luther King Boulevard, that's usually the worst street in the, one of the worst streets in the entire city. Oh my gosh! Look, they is. thought this monologue was gonna be something different. You know, when you come on the Millionaire Morning Show, you're getting something completely different than than what you thought. I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you the truth. If you honored them, then the street that you lived on and the Martin Luther King Boulevard in your city would look completely different. Martin Luther King High School in your city would look completely different. The way in which you live your life would be completely different. We don't even honor our ancestors and the people that blazed the path for us to be able to be the way that we are today by actually living it. Anybody can use a talking point. Anybody can say what they want to say. It reminds me of the conversations that we have when people are complaining about men or women, right? Anybody can say anything. Very few people actually do something. And it also reminds me of the of the idea that people are always blackity black and all of this. And I'm a black black. And I say, oh, OK, cool. So what you doing with the what about what about that chick? What about your kids? You take care of them? Nah, it's, it's the chick's fault. <laughs> what about that girl? You, all the women you're making for the streets that you claiming that you love some more. That's blackity black. Ah, <laughs> I can't rock with them. What about the fact that you need to hold down a job so that you can actually kick in the door and then be able to hire the people that you say you advocating for? Ah, it's the man's fault. So basically what you're telling me on MLK Day, because we're going to have this conversation next year on MLK Day, <laughs> is that you ain't did shit. Like you just all out here talking and wearing dashikis and got a bunch of ring lamps at the bottom <laughs> of your shirt thinking that you're African and you don't even know where it was made. And you think you're looking like a lampshade out here. 
you ain't actually doing nothing. All you doing is talking because your actions are not lining up with what it is that you advocating for. Conversely, me, I'm married minds. Mm. Ow. I hire them. Interesting. My daughter will never need or want for anything, and I'm grooming her. Hopefully not for your son, because your, your son is for the streets. Yeah, and when I say for the streets, I know that's for the women, but I'm saying that your son probably going to be zesty, zesty. Hey, girl. Your son might be zesty, zesty, because you don't know what it means to be a real man. And that came <laughs> from the blueprint is already there. It's laid out. I'm living it. I'm a reflection of it. So even if you don't want to reach all the way back into your ancestors and the Martin Luther Kings and the Malcolm X's and all of these people that we say that we honor and we have so much reverence for, you won't even vote in your own elections. And people literally died for your right to do so. And even if you do vote, you don't vote based off a of policy. You don't vote based off of what makes the most sense. You're voting based off of what you're being sold because you're so emotional and you have no idea what it takes in order to actually honor the people that came before you. So let's remix this a little bit differently because Anton, again, I'm not here to give you the speech that your teacher gonna give your kids when they go to school. I'm not here to reread and replay the I have a dream speech. I'm telling you that I'm living the dream. And if you truly want to understand what it means in order to honor your ancestors, you do the right thing. Get yourself together. Be selfish before you can be selfless. Become a better version of yourself and continue to level up and divest yourself against the worst versions of ourselves, which is not necessarily based off of what you look like and the color of your skin, but it's controlling the controllables. Regardless of what you felt Martin Luther King advocated for and believed in, and he was right about the idea that you align yourself based off of character and not skin. You want to go from Martin Luther King? You can go all the way back to Jesus. He died for your sins and opened it up for the Jews and the Gentiles alike, meaning that he no longer was on code and he was the exemplification of how it is that you divest yourself even from his own mother in order to align himself with the people that was supposed to be going in the direction that he's going in. The people that came before us left the blueprint and we not reading it, we not embracing it, we not loving it, we not loving each other. The way that you so, I always ask, this, ask people this question, Rita, and I say, how do you know and how do you show that you love God? How do you show that you love this thing that you've never seen, touched, felt, and it's all faith-based? By loving his people. Loving his people, baby girl. Loving his people. It's all about how it is that you treat other people, and that's how you can show that you love God. That's how you show that you are actually actually leveling up. When people say, and they come to me and they say, Anton, listen, you've poured so, many, so much into me. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, A, B, C, D, and this is how my life has changed. How can I pour into you? I say, you keep leveling up and then you pay it forward and pour into everybody else. That's the goal. We wanna add value relentlessly. We wanna to continue to push. We wanna to continue to be better. Honor your ancestors by doing what you're supposed to do. Don't sit here and talk about what it is that they've been through. Talk about what they've been through and how it is that it affected your life after you got the results. Don't be a negative representation of what Martin Luther King stood for. Don't be Martin Luther King Boulevard, all of these streets, the worst streets in America. Don't be that. Don't be that. Don't be the bad version and the representation of what it is that these people stood for. Be the reflection of the thing that you would advocate for. You would want your daughter to marry. You would want your son to be like. Be the thing that you want other people to be before you start having conversations about what they stood for. Because I'm sure that if Martin Luther King came back today and he's seen what y'all made of his street, <laughs> he's seen how y'all was living y'all life, he's seen that he died and it was assassinated for what it is that you live your life like right now, he'd be disappointed. Because I already am. Real talk. Happy MLK Day. I know y'all wasn't expecting that. But listen, as my boy Jonathan Barronville say, I, sometimes you got to get a whooping with the other end with the buckle side of the belt. Oh, not the buckle side. Yeah, sometimes you got to get a whooping with the buckle side of the belt. Happy MLK not Day. We're going to honor MLK by continuing to do the work, continuing to level up, and we don't miss. Shout out to the bag chasers. Anything that you want to add as a part of this conversation, boo? Um, yeah, well, it's not this conversation, but, um, hey, ch uh, the chat, can we send up some prayers for, uh, our moderator, Sir Shy? He's Shout out to Sir Shy. Feeling too good. Keep him in your prayers, please. 
Yeah, man. Shout out to Sir Chai. Sir Shy. Um, always got to keep the big homie in your prayers. Uh, we love all of the dopest moderators ever. We send in a prayer up for the homie. I hope you get better. JoJo says, keep Princess from Military Men after last night. Oh, my God. I heard a little oh bit of that. Oh, my God. That's... Shout out to our military members. I don't know if yeah, I want to say thank, not, you, uh, thank you for your service or... <laughs> Uh, or we need to take them out to the firing range and line them up. Jeez, well, they, putting, oh, peas. they out here. They put in the, some service, all right. They out here doing the devil's work <laughs> out here in the military and the navy. Don't let these men be out to sea for that long. Jesus Christ! Shout out to Sir Shad. We sending them prayers up. That's why my gang is my gang. They own it. I'm ready to dig into this MLK Day, to be honest with you. Let's go. Um, Before I dig, dig into MLK Day, because we're going to honor our university brethren uh, at the University of Michigan, because I think that I found the bag fumbler of the year. Way, Already? way above Antonio Brown. This still the first month. I don't want to get out, get into that yet because I know we're going to be in L.A. So prior to us being in L.A., what y'all got going on in there? What they got going on out in LA? We supposed to be out there. I told them yesterday. Let me tell you what I told them yesterday, Rhea. What? I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Atlanta uh, next month. No, I think we should take that off the list. Rita said take Atlanta off the list. Yeah. That's like Sodom and Gomorrah out there based off of what they was telling me yesterday. I concur. I Listen, said, I don't know. Um, I've been there and I've seen it. It's. It's a lot going on in Atlanta. I think it might be necessary for me to be that beacon of light out there in L.A. because it is utter chaos. So this is what people are telling me is happening out in, uh, in L.A. Shout out to Sir. He says, thank you, Rita and Anton, for the prayers. I needed that. I haven't been feeling myself lately, but I won't give up. Love my tribe. Ain't nothing to give up, homie. We got you. We got you. We got you, bro. We're sending them prayers up. I'm definitely going to add you to the prayer list for tomorrow, um, and we're going to get it popping. But... Utter chaos in L.A. So this is what I'm reading. They say it's ugly out there. Rail thefts leave tracks littered with pilfered packages. This picture that you see, this picture that you see right here, right here, this is what the tracks look like because they out here robbing rail cars now. Like it's the like it's the 1500s. Oh, my gosh. Like it's the 15 and the 1400s. Listen, let me show you all this really quickly. Y'all out here making L.A. Um, the Sunshine State is that the Sunshine State or is that Georgia? Um, I, I don't know. Rail thefts leave tracks scattered, littered, and pilfered with packages. This is why y'all not getting y'all packages because they out in LA doing the devil's work. Mm, is that why my stuff? Look ain't at came that yet? crap. You see this crap? Look at this. That's crazy. This is absolutely insane. I'm not wearing my good clothes. You want to you want to bring out the you don't want to bring out the Uwap Shabang. <laughs> I'm not wearing my good clothes to L.A. <laughs> the scene was a stretch of railroad tracks in Lincoln Heights on Saturday. A blizzard of torn plastic wrappers, cardboard boxes, and paper packaging, attesting to a wave of rail car thievery that officials say have been on the rise in recent months. They out here targeting rail cars now. They out here doing the devil's work. Mm mm mm. Several scavengers picked through the debris, hoping to find electronics, clothes, or whatever valuables thieves leave behind. Florida's a sunshine state. Yeah. So uh, that means that. <laughs> they said California. you a C student for real. <laughs> I am a C student. I am. <laughs> Shout out to Paranormal Activity. I am a C student for real, for real. Several scavengers, that means that y'all should be richer than me. Silence. Mm. Silence. Dang, honey, they was just joking. What? I'm just joking too. <laughs> we can't get it on both ends? All right, well, I'm going to be nice. Everything yeah. comes on the train. <laughs> Cell phones, Louis Vuitton purses. Look at Rita. She about to be on a rail car. Shout out, to LA. Sh shout out to the chicks that's for the rail cars. Uh, designer <laughs> clothes, <laughs> toys, lawnmowers, power equipment, power tools, said a 37-year-old man who declined to give his name. I wonder why he declined to give his name. Look at this ass. That look looks at this terrible. craziness. That looked like 
insanity. This ain't nothing but escape from LA for, with Snake Bliskin. Is it too late to um, change our flight? Nah, we coming to LA. Worse? We no, coming to LA. Saying. Um, who declined to give his name. He said he comes to the tracks regularly and once found a Louis Vuitton purse and a robotic arm worth five figures. We find things here and there, make some money off of it. Thieves are pilfering railroad, railroad cars and a crime that harks back to the days of hor- horseback riding bandits. Mm-hmm. And then when we get out here and we start boof, with the oop shebang on them, they're going to be saying, oh, Hands up, don't shoot. Hands up, don't shoot. Whew. Um, but it's fueled by a host of modern realities, including the rise of e-commerce and Southern California's role as a hub for the movement of goods. The images have generated national attention and revealed tension among rail operators, government officials, and authorities over what can be done to reduce the thefts. Later Saturday, approximately 17 cars on a Union Pacific rail, a Union Pacific train derailed in the same area where the vandalism has been occurring. The crew was not hurt. The cause is under investigation. Union Pacific reported that it claimed a 160% increase since December 2020 in thefts alone uh, along the railroad tracks in L.A. County. The railroad didn't release specific data on what was stolen or the value of what was lost. But it said the increase in crime cost the company at least five million last year. That don't make any sense. So are y'all telling me? Are you telling me that there's nothing that can be done because of these savages out here, out here running through the rail cars? I, you know, I've never, under, I've never been able to understand. Mm-hmm. I've never been able to understand why people spend the majority of their time doing crime when they can actually have that time dedicated to having a job. I'm so confused crime about is that. Easier than no, it having, ain't. Having they going to work you know every how much day. It work, you know how much work in the reconnaissance it takes in order to do crime. I, I don't do crime, so I don't oh know. Oh my god, these people are out here plotting and planning and putting their life on the line in order to get the metal bracelets and wind up going to jail. Yeah, that's not worth it. And they don't realize that. I mean, that's the reason why everything is increasing in price. Inflation. You are so smart, honey. Yay. Did you know that part of driving up inflation or the cost of goods and services, which ultimately we all pay for, Mm -hmm, right, is the criminals. Right. So you advocating paying more in order to not only jail and house them, feed them three cots and a cot a day, but you're also (laughs) paying more for goods and services as a result of them implementing and committing these crimes. Let's continue. Um, A bottleneck in the supply chain. And the presence of homeless encampments near rail lines have contributed to the thefts. Organized and opportunistic criminal rail theft impact our employees, our customers, and the overall supply chain industry. Guerrero estimates that about 90 cargo containers a day, 90 cargo containers, that means whole things Mm -hmm. a day are compromised sometimes by an organized group that has halted trains and recruited people living on the street to ransack the containers union pacific is deploying more drones they need to throw some guns on them drones has brought in extra security and enlisted the uh, los angeles the police department california highway patrol and the los angeles county sheriff's department to combat the thefts but union pacific is partly to blame for now, nah, Union Pacific is partly playing. interesting <laughs> for not deploying more security. We have millions of dollars of items and equipment, but it is unpoliced. There are even sometimes weapons on these trains. Everything goes by train. You learn the problem. Look at these people. They don't even care. The problem gained attention last week when KCBS and uh, KCAL photojournalist John Schreber um posted a series of photos and videos or, or um posted a series of videos and tweets including one of himself picking through discarded packages strewn along a rail line in lincoln heights and so who cleans this up so that the things can right. start going back by and how are they stopping these trains look he plucked out discarded uh you know test and jab tests um, a box of rei merchandise along with plat uh 
along tracks plastered with uh, packages intercepted and torn into well before reaching their destinations. Missing a package, shipment delayed, your package may be among the thousands we found discarded along the tracks. Mm -mm -mm. Los Angeles has seen a significant increase in homicides over the last two years. Property crimes like rail thefts are a different story. Property crime was up 2.6% over the same period from last year. Man, this is crazy. An Xbox package had caught their eye. Another mm. man had, who had been waiting for a bus stopped to run, rummage through the debris. He found some car speakers. He figured he could sell for $200 and make up for the hours he missed at work that day. He said, I'm going to take off work and I'm going to go rummaging. This is crazy, bro. Jesus. This is insane. Wow. I don't think it's anything less for us to see here. Look at all of them got dog packages. Right. And like you said, who cleaning that up so that the next train can um come through unless they just drive over it? This is absolutely insane. We are living literally in chaos. The richest country in the world, the most liberal country, the most liberal state, California, in the entire country, and we can't even freaking secure our goods and services that wrote that like we in the 1500s and the 1400s. They're literally robbing rail cars and have homeless encampments along this. Yo, I don't know about this. I don't even think that I'm gonna stay in. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm standing downtown LA. I think I'm gonna stay on the uh, outskirts. How about Irvine? Irvine, California. Is Irvine safe? That's like three hours from LA, I, th I heard. Don't. Irvine, California? No. I think. No I way. Think so. Hey, somebody tell me what's happening with Irvine, California. See if Irvine, California is popping. Um, is that a safe place for us to book our hotel room? I'm going to have to do some reconnaissance. I'm going to have to figure out. That's my new word for the day, reconnaissance. I like that word. You like that? I'm going to have to figure out what's going on, man. Where should I stay at in California? What city? I'm thinking. I found a nice hotel in Irvine, California. Let's but I don't see. think that I want to stay in downtown Los Angeles. We need somewhere for people to park, to be able to come link up, all of that type of stuff. Rita's out there searching. Irvine. Scrolling relentlessly. I'm trying to figure it out. It's two hours away? Mm. I don't even want to get a car out there. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get a car. So it's saying 45 minutes. 45 minutes away. I knew that. Why is everybody saying two hours and all of that? Well, probably because the L.A. traffic. It's staying Thousand Oaks. Because the L.A. traffic I hear is a. Uh, they said Irvine is, is dope. Bad. They said Irvine is dope. They say you're going to see a million tents lined up in the streets of downtown. Nah, I'm straight. Irvine, 45 minutes away. It is very safe. Thank you, Janae. Interesting. Sir Shai said, you can find a lot of treasure on railroad tracks. I guess so. Orange County. Mm. Yeah, they said because of the traffic. They said don't go to Cali at all. Traffic, <laughs> traffic. <laughs> Trying to get to Cali. Ah. Traffic, traffic. I can afford Calabasas. But can y'all come to? Can y'all afford to come and kick it with your boy in Calabasas? That's the question. I'm trying to find a central location. That's why I ain't booked the. See, Rita, that's why I ain't booked the uh, hotel yet. I'm gonna let it slide this time because Morris in County. this instance that is true. But normally you don't book it just because that's. They said Irvine, California is dope. Irvine is too far. Burbank, Glendale. Nah, we're not going to downtown. Pasadena, Ventura. You said something else after Irvine. Somebody they said, said go something stay else. over Skid Row. That's what AL said. Mm -mm. No, nah, he didn't say go stay there, but he just said Skid Row. That's close to downtown, though, right? I believe so. Yeah, that's what uh, Mercedes told me. Mm. We could stay in Beverly Hills. Janae trying to set them up. My sis live in Irvine. Irvine is dope. Um, conservatives do not belong in California. I agree. I'm not good downtown. Uh, Burbank, Pasadena, Glendale, Anton and Rita. Hmm. Pasadena. All right, we're gonna figure that out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bunch of cities in the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I'm gonna put a bunch of cities in the Patreon 
and then I'm a, maybe I'll get a, a, a consensus based off of how it is that they vote in the Patreon. And then we can figure it out from there. I, I trust my tribe. I trust my tribe. They always going to hold us down. You want to get into the meat and potatoes of this story? I'm, I want to. I would like to. Shout out to Mark. Let's just call him Mark. He's a Mark today. <laughs> is that his name? Yeah, his name is Mark. His oh, okay. His name is Mark. Okay. Um, Mark has an annual salary of $972,000 a year. Isn't that close to a million? Yeah. And, um, again, link to the Patreon is in the description. Oh, man, I'm pointing the wrong way. Link to the Patreon is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. If you need to book me for a personal call, we can get it popping. But Mark makes roughly a little bit short of a million dollars a year. Oh, that's crazy. All right? A million dollars a year. And Mark said, listen, I'm older. I need you. I want you, and I got to have you. Now, we don't know what's going on in Mark's household, all right? But the one thing that I do know is that Mark, in my personal opinion, is the bag fumbler of the year right now. Very, very prestigious university. I work there. I think that it's a great uh, work environment. I loved working at the University of Michigan. But Mark said, yo, you going to bust it down for real now? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Mark said you That's gonna, what he said He said you're gonna bust it down for a real nip. That's what he said to her The 60 uh, Hotel Beverly Hills is excellent I'm a Marriott guy I'm a Marriott guy So wherever it is that um, Whatever it is my Mar- It's gotta be a Marriott property It's gotta be a Marriott property But Mark said you're gonna bust it down for a real nip. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing so hard, Rita? Why are you laughing so hard? Because I just can't imagine Mark saying that. Why? Mark got Mark need got needs. All yeah, he got needs, but I can't imagine him saying that though. And Kojak said his wife is a lawyer. She probably is angry with Mark. Mark said you're gonna bust it down downtown. Yo, we gonna get into the text mess. I mean, the emails and all of that. Oh I can't gosh. wait to dive into this. So, let's How dive into the story. Do you think that this is embarrassing for Mark? Yes, he got a whole family or wife at least. I don't know if he got kids, but he Mark said, "Bust it down, down." Now, um, <laughs> I was alerted to this story. Uh, I believe it was last night. Mm, the night yeah. before last. Night before last. I believe. Night before last. I couldn't wait, Rita. Hold on, hold on. I couldn't wait to do this show. I was I so mad that I had to live stream that I didn't do the live stream on Sunday. Right? I was so mad that I didn't do the live stream on Sunday. But I couldn't wait to get into this live stream. But University of Michigan President Mark Schlitzel fired by board after investigation. I thought that he was doing a phenomenal job. from Just from a business perspective, I thought that he was doing a phenomenal job. Now, we're going to di- deep dive into this, ladies and gentlemen, because, again... I don't discriminate. And your ability to have dick discipline is going to be the difference between making a million dollars a year or sitting at home and having a good time. All right. Mm, mm, mm. So Mark, let me show you what Mark, Mark said, look at him. Mark said, I I need love. I need love. So university of Michigan fired by the board after the investigation and the Patreon yesterday, I did a breakdown for you guys on power, assets, power, control. And I I emphasized um, exactly how it is that you guys need to be looking at things uh, from this perspective. And then I broke down the whole situation as far as the hierarchy. And a lot of people think that the hierarchy ends at the CEO. And it doesn't. It doesn't. The board. The board, the board controls you, the people and the customers and the population at large control the board. Everybody has a boss. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a boss. Right. And so anyways, you can join the Patreon and you can check out that video. But I I broke all of that down. Right. But the board determined Mark's fate. 
as the president of University of Michigan, right? Let's dive into this a little bit. The Board of Regents unanimous, unanimous, unanimously fired school president Mark Schlissel um, for causing for cause following an investigation into a relationship with a subordinate. This dude was talking to the side chick at the job. He didn't know. He didn't know. You don't even put yourself in a position to have to deal with these hoes. And a letter to Schlissel posted on the school website, and you know everything becomes public. So his whole hey, life. They put it on the whole website. His whole life he'd been hustling and getting to the bag, and Mark said, baby girl, I need you to bust it down for a real one, and you this is what happened. You don't know he said that. I know what he told her. And he was playing future. <laughs> and he was playing future. I know what Mark was doing. Um... It spelled out his concern and said his conduct was par- particularly egregious, considering your knowledge and of and involvement in addressing uh, incidents of harassment by University of Michigan personnel and your declared commitment to the work uh, to work to free the university uh, community of sexual harassment and other improper conduct. So right now they're framing this conversation as though Mark was out here being egregious right mm-hmm. and i think that one of the reasons that they doing this let me just go ahead and do this one of the reasons that they doing this is because let me pull mark down a little bit hold on we're gonna talk about mark i want y'all to know who we're talking about one of the reasons why they're doing this is because the university already have been dealing with and and universities at large especially over at um michigan state what to do with the gymnasts and all of that other type of stuff. And then you got players complaining. Mm-hmm. And anytime that universities find themselves under fire or continuing to get these lawsuits and people accusing them, it costs them a lot of money, even to settle all of that. And so, you know, when they have situations like this, where the person at the top is participating in this kind of behavior, you're going to catch it the worst. It's a zero, it's a zero sum game. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. you're going to catch that L all the way around. So let's continue. For example, the letter said, citing a recent scandal involving the university's highest academic officer. See, um, with regards to actions of Martin Filbert. And I, I don't even think I had did a story on him, but I had read this on August in 2020. Uh, You sent an email to the entire university community writing that the highest priority for our regents and leadership team is to make our community safe for all. So long story short, it was another dude that had 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 these chicks busting it down for a real one. And he got caught up or whatever because the chicks was accusing him and they were saying that he was using his position in order to get to that P. Pussy popping, yo, pussy popping. All right, come on. You also declared... (laughs) To the community that your leadership would determine what we need to do to address the fear of retaliation in our community and build culture that does not accept misconduct or harassment at any level. Okay, that's all good. That's those are that's that's the good stuff. Those are the, the talking points. Let's get to the good stuff. According to emails, all right. So no man deserves to be the president of a university if he can't even control his email inbox. <laughs> if you can't control your work email inbox, <clears throat> you need to be fired. And I thought he was doing a good job. But okay, we're going to dive into it. We're going to shout out to Mark Schlussel. At least we know he a real one. Poogies and Ray Rays are not just black. Sometimes they look like Mark. <laughs> According to emails posted on the university Posted by the university on its website, Schlissel wrote to the female employee regularly. Oh, no, say it ain't so, Mark. Including in October 2019 when he emailed about receiving a box of niches. What the piss is knishes? Niches. Who? What? K-N-I. Let's see what niches are. K-N-I what? Look up niches for me. K-N-I-S-H-E-S. Maybe that meant to say kisses. Kisses. K N I. Oh no, it's a it's a food. K N I S H I. It's a Jewish I mean, a Jewish snack food. So Mark is Jewish. He looks Jewish. Let me look at Mark. Mm-hmm. Let me see what he looking like. Yeah, he probably Jewish. Yeah, he look like it. All right, so let's see what we got here. 
Let's get down. So he was sending knishes. The woman said in reply that she liked the doughy snack food. Yeah, I bet you do like that doughy snack food. She also replied again. Can I lure you to visit with the promise of a knish? Is it knish or is it nish? I don't know how you say it. It's probably, I like knish better. It's probably nish because usually the K is Can silent. I lure you with the promise of a knish? He said, let me get you in here. Got some knishes for you, boo. <laughs> Snack time. <laughs> Snack oh, my time. goodness. Um, Schlichel sent dozens of inappropriate emails. You and his work email? Yes. The regent said, including a link to a New Yorker magazine story entitled Sexual Fantasies of Everyday New Yorkers. Mm. This don't make no sense. This don't make no sense. All right. So let's continue to dive. We're going to dive. The decision to fire him was made behind closed doors. No, it was made very publicly. Yes, it was. Um, Former UN president Mary Sue Coleman will return to the campus as an interim president. She helped find him. She was the, she was the president from 2002 to 2014. That's when I was working there under when she was there. Mm-hmm. Um, buildings being remodeled. She says, while well, we sad when I left the University of Michigan. I'm happy to serve it. So he's been there since 2014. So about six years. Mm-hmm. Nope. Eight years. You said 2014. It's 2022. Oh, my goodness. I am. The behind. board had hired an outside firm to conduct an independent investigation into his actions, whether he had violated the university's. Uh, supervisor relationship policy. I don't know what that is. Um, they didn't identify the chick. After an investigation, they learned that over a period of years, used his university email account to communicate with that subordinate in a manner inconsistent with the dignity and reputation reputation of the university. All right, so let's get to the emails. Here's some of the emails, y'all. This is gonna be fun. Let's get, let's see if Mark was asking her to bust it down for a real one. <laughs> I want to know if she was for the streets of, or if she was just for the playground. But we're going to find out. All right. <laughs> she was for the office. She was the office Whoever chick. Whoever said I was for the playground, I'm going to get you She y'all. was the office chick. On July 1st, you know, they got way more emails than this. He, must have been, he probably was sending cockpits and everything, allegedly. Allegedly. I'm convinced that men are retarded. <laughs> Rita love using the R word. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. I like using it too, but then you was telling I'm me. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You was okay, telling me. You was telling me not to use the word. Mm-mm. And now you feel Mm-mm. comfortable using the word. No, no, no. I didn't tell you not to use the word. I told you not to mock people. <laughs> that is what I told you. I didn't say anything about the word. I would like to do some mocking right now. I, and possible. I'm going to say no, please. No, respectfully. That's selfish. <laughs> That's some selfish ass right there. Okay, all right. Well, then let's talk about Mark then. Well, hold on. Let me get let me get my view right. Let's talk about Mark. All right. January first, two thousand twenty-one. You exchange emails with the subordinate using your University of Michigan email. In this exchange, she states that her heart hurts. Oh, Mark was laying it down. He was putting that pipe down. Mark was putting that pipe down. She said her heart hurt. <laughs> her heart hurt. To which you respond, look, I know. Mine's too, baby. Honey, say, tell me this. Let's have a conversation. Say, okay. say my heart hurts. My heart hurts. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's too. <laughs> this is my fault. That you are in pain too. <laughs> I wish I were strong enough to find a way. That's what he said. I wish I was strong enough to find a way. Let me give you this good news though. Then on January 9th, 2021, it said, uh, let me see, responded to an email from the subordinates official University of Michigan email address. What is they sending emails with an official address? Well, That's why they send it to you retarded. at all? Like, don't even, don't send no emails, no text messages, no nothing. 
Um, the subordinate has said, oh, yes. And you're, oh, yes. And in response, you says, I love it when you say that. I love it when you say that, baby. This is probably just the, the, the nice stuff. Right. The stuff that they could put out. <laughs> Check it out. On September 1st, you wrote to the subordinates. Uh, he called her sexier. Mm. Hey, baby. Look, you look sexier today. Is that your hair? You changed your hair color? You got on a different, different lipstick. You know, when when they when they doing with it with the side chick, they know it's all intangibles. November 4th. Um, you expressed disappointment that you were potentially not sitting with the subordinate and stating the only reason I agreed to go was to go with you. There is a conspiracy theory out here against me, baby. Oh, here we go. The only reason I agreed to go is because of you. Why are you sitting all the way over there? Ain't nobody gonna know. Just kiss the tip. Oop. December 3rd. He was already in the investigation by then. He'd been in the investigation since the summer. And this is what he's talking about. He said uh, he responded to the subordinate regarding the Big Ten Championship. Ooh, he said University of Michigan is in the game. He said championship president sweet briefing info stating that you can give me a private briefing. Oh, my god! He said you can give me a private briefing. And he corny. Well, you don't know the context. He might have said, you can give me a private briefing. Or he might have said, yo, come over here, give me a private briefing. You know, he when your voice goes low, it it's like a that. different. He don't even look like that mm. type. Mm, mm, mm. The relationship policy was put into place on July 2021 following revelations that Filbert, the former prevost, had been using his position for years to coerce women who worked for him into sexual relationships so wait a minute so let's let's back up for a minute here let's back up for a minute if i'm in a man if i'm a man in position of power Mm -hmm. and we all grown adults Mm -hmm. and you trying to throw it back (laughs) and i'm trying to throw it in if i'm in a position of power are you coerced into doing so no, not if I. What, what that's if I, I want to do? What if I lead with money and I say, "Yo, you know how they do at the Pistons game on the on the floss cam? They show and they watch. They bust down. Am I coercing you? No. When is it coercion, in your opinion, as a woman? Uh, I don't know that there is because you always have the option to say no. I mean, I don't care what you say and how much game you try to run. If I'm not interested, then I'm going to say no, and I'm not going to put myself in a position to for anything to go further if that's not what I want to happen. What if I say I can get you a promotion? What if it's, I don't say it, but it's understood that you can get that promotion? No, it's not worth it because then you're going to be coming back for more and it's going to always be something. Well, you have fun too. What if I'm not interested in you? What if you're not attractive? What if you're not my type? I know women that's done more for less. That's not me. Go get your bag, girl. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, I like your style. Even under pressure, you whole frame. I like that. I like that. But he lost out on a, on an M. He lost out on one M a year. I think he had a four or five year contract. That's Let crazy. me do a little bit more deep diving so we can better understand what Mark was, why he had her busting it down. Because she had, she had to be something else. I mean, listen. She probably I hope he a lot pull, younger than him too. I hope he ain't pull a Bill Clinton on us and has some chick that looked like a bag of bricks out under the desk doing what she do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she probably was a, a lot younger. I'm sure. Failure to report the relationship is a serious offense and calls for discipline up to and including dismissal from employment. What people don't realize when it comes to these high power positions is that you are held to a completely different standard. It's at will employment. Mm-hmm. Literally, they can get you up out of there ASAP for any reason at all. And so you got to perform all the way across the board. His contract is what's commonly known as a, uh, as a morals clause. They put a moral clause in his contract. It said your conduct and comportment shall at, at all times be consistent with promoting the dignity, reputation, and academic excellence of the university. Can you imagine this man busting it down for a real one right here? Like other presidents, uh, Schlissel 
is a tenured faculty member as well as a president. It's unclear whether his tenure will be revoked. His contract says in the event of such clause termination is also is not also caused under the university's tenure policies. You shall have your rights as a tenured faculty member. His contract voids, though, if he's fired for cause. Hired in 2014 and 2018, the board extended his contract for five more years. So his contract was coming up anyway. Fall 2001, Schlichel announced he'd be stepping down as president one year early in 2023. While he said he was doing so in order to make a true smooth transition in leadership. It came amid deep divisions on the board about his performance. So he was already on the outs anyway. He just wanted to rock out for another year. Mm-hmm. But he still missed out on at least two M's. Um, board gathered with Schlissel in an outdoor meeting at the president's backyard in the fall of 2020 where multiple regents raised concerns about his handling of the university's response to C-19. So now I'm wondering, was this just a ploy to get back at him and then he gave them all the ammunition that they needed in order to fire him by using this university um, email account? And then got a whistleblower through in there. Probably. Because when you was reading those emails, he told her in a, in an email that it was, they had something against him. So he knew that, he probably knew that they was investigating him or looking at him for something. Check it out. He's been praised for his work around the access to the university for low-income students. He implemented the Go Blue Guarantee, which covers the entire tuition cost for students whose families make under $65,000 a year. See, he's a good dude. Mm-hmm. All right, so on the flip side of this, though, it says that the university is investigating him. He just all the way back fumbling. Um, Investigating whether he misused university funds in support of the relationship. So they're probably going to be trying to get some of that money back they paid him. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably took her out to dinner with the company card. They're investigating whether he misused university funds in support of his relationship with a female employee. Two sources with knowledge um, of the investigation told the Free Press. You know, I don't F with the Free Press, the Detroit Free Press. Let me tell you why I don't F with the Detroit Free Press. Why? You know, the Detroit Free Press is the same publication that blew the lid, the muffin top, blew that muffin cap back on Kwame Kilpatrick, the mayor of Detroit, Mm -hmm. with his side chick. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so they own this S. (laughs) The Detroit Free Press be on this S. Listen, if you're doing crime... Don't do the don't do the crime if you can't do the time in Detroit because the universe the Detroit Free Press be on this ass they blew that muffin top back on Kwame Kilpatrick sure and had, did. had that dude in jail mm-hmm. divorce in jail all of that kind of crap but okay we, okay listen let's get back to the story we're gonna go ahead and finish cooking up uh, look into how much money was spent as a part of the ongoing review of Schlissel and his conduct um, school boards fired. Schlissel, New York law firm, Jenner and Block. He makes nine hundred oh nine hundred twenty seven thousand thousand dollars a year. That's crazy. University posted its contract with the law firm on Wednesday. They're trying to be as transparent as possible. After an investigation, we learned that Dr. Schlissel, over a period of years, used his university email account to communicate with a subordinate. Got it. The law firm charges the university per hour. The firm's standard rate was eleven hundred dollars per hour in 2021 to twelve fifty in 2022. Now you know that when they talk about billable hours, it's as many people as work the case per hour. That's what they charge it. Mm-hmm. So they spending M's. They billing them M's to get this dude up out of there. Um, but it's giving a fifteen percent discount to the school. <laughs> Shut that ass up. Schlissel wrote to the female employee regularly in a familiar tones, whatever, blah, blah, blah. All right. So any final thoughts on this, Rita? Nope. Men, None? Men are the R word. Is it the men or is it the women that they rock with? No, it's, it's the men because he is the one who... Had way more to lose than she had. Mm -hmm. He got a wife, his job, all of that. Why are you using the company email to email a side chick about sex? First of all, why do you have a side chick? Ah, there you go. Yep. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. But okay. So because he do, 
then you should go about it differently. Well, no texting, the- no emails, like technology it's it's too much technology these days everybody get caught and it's always because of some type of technology a phone call a text message an email something so okay so listen to the people this is the poll okay i did a poll i said have you ever been so infatuated with someone that you almost fumbled the bag the poll of the show today 54 percent said yeah i can admit it oh and that's just the people that's willing to admit it. Fifty more than half of everybody, over three hundred votes, over three hundred and forty votes, they said that they can admit that they've been so infatuated with someone that they almost fumbled the bag. They almost gave up the ghost. Now, there's people that probably have gave up the ghost, and I just didn't even give them an option to answer. Forty six percent said, "Nah, I've always been laser focused." Cap. <laughs> Cap, cap, cap. I don't believe the majority of y'all saying that y'all already had already been all pretty really laser focused. But but it, it begs the question though, Rita. Is this grounds for a divorce? What Mark Schlitz, Mark Schlitz, listen, we're not even talking about just the cheating part, right? We know that divorce for life means divorce. I mean, divorce for life, married for life means married for life. Mm-hmm. But he fumbled an M. But he was on his way out anyway. He'd already made his money. Is the forget the money, forget the cheating. Is the visibility, the reputation, being a public figure, does that is that grounds for divorce? No, I mean not for me personally because I don't care what people think. Rita, a real one, y'all. Rita is a real one. Mark said he wanted to bust it down for a real one. And he was out here running around doing what he do. And Rita said, I got your back. I'm going to hold you back. Because, I mean, if I cared about what people thought, then, man, you wouldn't be married because I would have listened to my mom and not did it. So, hmm. Listen, I believe in, in dick discipline. So, shout out to Mark for busting it down for a real one. We rock with you. <laughs> Thank you for giving me... Uh, a conversation to be able to have this morning to illustrate how it's important for men in high power positions to be able to exercise dick discipline. Now, again, I'm sure Mark got his bag. I'm sure he, you know, as long as he stayed tenured, I'm sure he stacked his money. I think that he had an um, actual place on the university that's paid for, um, a he residence, move, right? a home, all of that. Yeah, he's going to have to move now, but he should have his bag secure. But I, be- I believe that he's the back of the Lord of the year so far. I honestly believe he's the bag bumbler of the year so far. It's ruined his whole reputation. Yeah, that's bad. Mm-hmm. That's bad. All right, Rita. One more thing before we tap out. Do you know who this guy is? No. You don't know who Martin Shkreli is? No, should I? Martin Shkreli is... Um, he had founded a company that had a drug i think it was a um was it an hiv drug or something like that he bought a company well he had got rich he wound up having to do time because the people came after him and it was people whining i know he had bought a wu-tang album it was a one-off for a million dollars and nobody has ever heard it new york state seized it from him but yeah he was very very controversial years ago and that he didn't give a f like he was the original fuck your feelings guy Mm. And he didn't give a F about what people thought. He bought the company and he raised the drug prices and all of this other type of stuff. And people were pissed and saying, hey, you, you, we deserve these drugs and all of this other type of stuff. Well, um, he got sent to jail. Well, let, let's let's back up for a little bit. Let's back up for a little bit. All right. California Blue says, let me see what California Blue say. California Blue says, sound like he was just exercising his options. What's the problem? <laughs> Talking about Mark. Mm. Mark Schlitzel over at the University of Michigan. But my boy uh, Screlly, he bought that Wu Tang album. Yep, he sure did. He raised the price of HIV drugs and then they went after him. He had bought a company, raised the price of the drugs for HIV, and then people started going after him. But um, recently appeared in the news. And that he is one of the most hated people <laughs> of all time. Dang, that sucks. They consider him to be one of the most hated people 
And he has to fork over almost 65 M's. Um, they called him Pharma Bro. Will all will also never be allowed to work in the pharmacy pharmacy industry again. So Damn. here's it. Here it is. Hold on. Let me break this down. Rarely justice is served in this horrible word of our world of ours. So when Martin Scarelli, known as America's most punchable or most hated man, that's a pretty extenuating circumstance, has a bad day, it's important to take notice. Scarelli's currently serving a seven year sentence at the Federal uh, Correctional Institute in Allenwood, Pennsylvania, for a securities fraud conviction, has been banned for life from the pharmaceutical industry, according to a federal judge's order. Somebody says, sit closer to your mic. Me? Yeah. Um, My mic is pretty loud. Um, Moreover, he must return $64.6 million in profits he made from increasing the price of the life-saving medication, Daraprim, by over 4,000%. Dang. So long story short, he bought a company that I guess sold Daraprim. He raised the price and he made a lot of money off of it. That's called capitalism. But people were so mad. So here's here's here again. Here it is. From seventeen dollars and fifty cent was the cost of it to seven hundred and fifty dollars a pill. Seventeen dollars and fifty cent to seven hundred and fifty dollars a pill. No, Daraprim crazy. treats the parasite infection toxo plasmosis in people with hiv all right the case against scarelli and his former company um was brought by the federal federal trade commission in seven states money from the verdict will be distributed to victims nationwide manhattan judge whatever blah 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 was the ma- they said scarelli was the mastermind of the company's illegal conduct and the person principally responsible for it throughout the years his current stint in prison is for other offenses that predate his time as a showboating pharma bro who was eventually booted off of Twitter after harassing female journalists. He won Once Upon a Time in Shaolin, Wu-Tang Clan's one-of-a-kind album recorded in secret at an auction in 2015. The group looking to resurrect a patronage concept stipulated that the new owner could not exploit the work for personal gain but could share it at listening parties. When Scarelli was still on social media, he regularly bra- bragged about owning it. Um, I'll probably never hear it. I just thought it would be funny to keep it from people. He was forced to turn the album over to the U.S. government after his conviction. Um, and then Uncle Sam sold it. Investors in crypto and N- NFTs. Uh, jokes on them as the Wu-Tang Clan created a physical and fungible item. This is like somebody having a scepter of an Egyptian king. So long story short. He was one of the most hated people in society in America for a long time. Um, He used to call himself the farmer bro. He used to go on Twitter and troll and brag on people because he was getting to the bag. Um, He made a lot of money. He was a very smart guy, but not not smart enough to be able to dodge the scrutiny that landed him in jail. Right. So do you think that it's ethical, considering that we live in a capitalistic society, to raise prices on an HIV drug, even if it affects people negatively? It's his company. Um, I don't think that he should have raised it that much. That was a bit extreme. You think but, so? But then, I mean. It's his company. Yeah. Well, people and, had an outcry about it regardless, but it was so, his company. So here's here's my thing about that. And I might be off and people might be mad. So. It, HIV is something that you can prevent yourself from getting. It's not like it's a cancer or something that you just that you just you know (laughs) get. So HIV is one of those things that you can prevent. Like you don't have to have HIV. So is it his responsibility to make sure that you get your Drugs, or is it your responsibility to protect yourself to make sure that you don't get it? They say that you've been around me too long. Well, I haven't seen that in this chat, but apparently you've been around me too long because now you're taking a perspective of a person that's putting the responsibility back on the people. Right. I mean, you know, because it's one thing. It's like cancer. You can't prevent that. Like, you know, it just happens to people. So does it matter what the drug is or does it matter about whether or not people should be able to do what they want to do and then take responsibility for it? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that question? Does it matter about the circumstances surrounding it? So, for example, 
the fact that um the fact that you you can't control whether or not you get cancer versus the fact that you can't control whether or not you get HIV doesn't make a difference as far as whether or not he should be able to do what he want to do with his own company. Mm. No, I don't think so. I think, like you say, it's his company. I, he can do whatever he want to do with it. Like, well, people were pissed at him. I, that's not why he got convicted. Well, if, but now the judge is saying he needs to return the profits for making money off of that, though. Is that how it work? Apparently, that's how it works as far as, like, his mob justice. Now, I don't agree with him, right? I don't think that he did the right thing at all. But it just begs the question, how far-reaching should the government be when it comes to being able to determine what it is that you can do with your own your own company? I don't know. I don't know. I think it's a good question to have. I think it's something that we should explore I think that ethics and morals obviously go hand in hand and you should have good ethics and good morals. However, how do you determine whether or not somebody is should or shouldn't do something just based off of whether or not ethics, ethics and morals, but it's not necessarily illegal? This is like a mob justice situation for me. But again... Martin Scarelli, they say he has the most punchable face. Um, and he is doing it seven years. And I'm sure he will just be just fine when he gets out. But anyway, sure so any additional thoughts before we close out the show? No, sir. Nothing? I was just looking at these comments. People were saying that, uh, you know, you born with, some people are born with it. Some people are born with HIV, mm-hmm. but isn't that the responsibility that's, of the parents not to? Exactly. Like, why would you have a child knowing that that's a possibility? Come on, y'all. Listen, the victim Olympics is real. I believe that every, anything you get in this life, often at times what we don't talk about is the fact that the kids ultimately are the ones that pay the price for the, for the, for the situation that their parents put them in. That is very true. So if your kids is effed up, you should. But then they got mad at me for saying that I don't think that everybody should have kids. That I think that that you should be able to meet a certain threshold before you have kids. Oh, I agree Anton, with that. we need a slave class. We need people I to know, service our wall, our Starbucks. I know somebody who um, has opted out of having children because this particular thing runs in their family. Yeah, so they wanted to be and responsible. And she said that she just don't want it because her brother is going through it, and she was like, you know, I just don't want to have to go through that with my own child. So she just says she's not ever having kids. I think that's smart. I agree. I agree. But I think that this was a phenomenal show today. Again, I ladies agree. and gentlemen, thank you for Nicholas Virgil. For, point the wrong way. Nicholas Virgil <laughs> for holding me down. Again, shout out to the Bag Chasers and my Patreon gang gang. Uh, link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Make sure you align yourself with a group of people that's going in the direction that you're supposed to be going in. All right. Gang gang members is on deck as usual. Get you an accountability partner. Wake, work your way up through the bottom of the videos all the way through the top. And let's get to this money. All right. Anything else before we dip off? Read or read? No, sir. Today right. was great per usual. We had a little bit of a fumble in the beginning, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's Monday. It didn't stop us. You still cooked. As you did usual. a great show. As usual. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Don't fumble on MLK MLK's <laughs> birthday, y'all. I get to the money. Get to the bag. Make sure you share this with somebody because we don't want to be rich by ourselves. I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to catch you tomorrow. Peace.